The Cure is back in black. Songs of a Lost World is the result of an artist minding his muse. Robert Smith picks up where we left off 16 years ago by celebrating the beauty of impermanence. I love that there are no definable singles on Songs of a Lost World, the new album by The Cure that is so accomplished that being The Cure, Robert Smith could listen to it and learn a few things about himself. He is likely doing just that, as he recently mentioned that the album's follow-up is already nearing completion. The record, the band's first in 16 years, plays like the score of a life you have been living and weren't there to hear. Robert never went away, but now he is catching up with you, friend. Like a distant car alarm, a neighbor's television turned up too loud, or a stranger's cell phone ringing in the middle of a movie, Songs of a Lost World is part of the environment. This record is a dark affair that makes you ask how much more black could this be, and the answer is none. None more black. Sixteen years of advances in production techniques and technology have served the cure very well. The record has got some sonic muscle. Still, 16 years between albums from any band that came out in 1978 is going to invite skepticism about the new material. Never for Robert Smith. Never for The Cure. Never. When listening to The Exhalation, which is this eight-song collection that plays at a perfect just shy of 50 minutes, it is clear that those in-between days were spent taking a deep breath. Why say anything at all until it is time to say it? That is what makes Robert so effective, so able to be trusted, and so of the moment, every moment. Robert Smith has never flaunted authenticity as an angle, and his authenticity is absolute for it. His credibility is verified by the songs. The timeline for the birth of the tunes is irrelevant. Immediately, Songs of a Lost World is a meditation meant to bring you to an emotional place and leave you there. What you do next is up to you, but no matter what, that next thing will only be what it is after you have been here first. This record will change you. Opener, alone, makes quick work of those washy cure keys, performed by Roger O'Donnell, that sound like what we see on the horizon line of a morning sky so gray that it tricks us into not knowing what time it is as it meets the tops of trees holding the last days of fall leaves. The vibration of Simon Gallup's bass guitar strings play percussion, an unexpected and exhilarating bit of umami-like sensory experience. Dude has been with the band so long that his thighs probably don't know what they feel like without his instrument resting there. Drummer Jason Cooper has only been a member since 1995, unlike Gallup's lifetime tenure, but I am celebrating his 30th anniversary anyway. The sound of his kick drum is as open as the heart of the listener it pounds alongside. It flourishes at the end of End Song, the 10-minute closer, which is as epic as it wants to be and makes one wonder how Robert has yet to use this song title, punctures as much as it punctuates. All the better to push you into that emotional place that Robert plotted before approaching the microphone. Only artists with lengthy life experiences that make for mastery over the multitudes they contain are able to harness and manifest that power to give us a record as fully resolved as Songs of a Lost World. So few songwriters continue to crave connection to the intersection of muse and musical execution so late in their careers. Robert does this because Robert is this. Is it an unintended side effect of nearly five decades in eyeliner, smeared lipstick, and teased hair that Robert will always look the same at a distance? His visage alone has become iconic in its ability to conjure I remember where I was and how I felt feeling when one of his songs comes on. Now, his look also symbolizes something we are about to feel. Robert represents timelessness, and as much as Songs of a Lost World contemplates the end, it represents this timelessness too. Unfortunately, timelessness and permanence are not the same thing. Memories can live forever, but the remembered cannot. Robert's gift to us as listeners is that he can make music so grounded while also suspending this hope of permanence in midair. Like life itself, we can possess anything for a moment before it slips away. The point is to recognize impermanence as beautiful. To possess anything forever is to watch it die. When there is no defined entrance or exit, it is new forever. When Robert gives interviews, it always seems to be from this place of resolute vulnerability, just beneath an everyman affability. When I watch, I always feel this, why am I here, aloofness in his attitude.
but never in his content. Robert is forever letting us into his world, but doesn't act like he needs to keep us there. This is the no fucks to give posture that always set him apart from his peers, forever injecting wry humor into a catalog known for picking apart the most desperate moments of life. Even Friday I'm in Love describes a pretty bleak rest of the week after all. The songs of Songs of a Lost World are beautiful in their impermanence too. Robert gets it because he knows there is nothing to get. We won't be here long. <laughs>